Yo, what's up? We are here in the freezing cold, snowy outskirts of Moscow on the Eastern Front in the year 1941. And since Enlisted improved its weather effects one week ago, let's see how this map, which is the one impacted the most by weather effects, by dawn, right currently by the way it's dawn, by fog and by snow and everything that's nice and atmospheric. Yeah, let's try this map out under these new improved conditions. I want to take a tank to shell the bunker, though two people already took a tank, so let's see if we can help us out with a machine gun. Yeah, around around 80, around 70 to 80 percent of all the enemies are gonna spawn in the objective, either in the bunker or in the trench, and the rest is gonna be behind. So the machine gun has is good to kill everyone behind and potentially weak tanks that are driving on the hill behind the point. Though we didn't see anything of that, so... Yeah, instead we got already clipped. <laughs> okay, we need to get forward. And there we see the fog, and it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, this is one of the most beautiful, possibly the most beautiful map in the game. Oh, yes. Yes, exactly. Okay. We are getting destroyed. Yeah, we are getting destroyed. And the enemies are positioned very well. They're not folk, they're not concentrated all in the point. They are spread out. I see some machine guns on the far right. I see at least one tank. I see on the left. Yeah, this is a very strong enemy team. You can instantly see it. They have very dynamic positioning. They are using the They are using all the space. So whenever we get attacked, if we look in one direction, we get shot from the other direction. This is going to be extremely hard. I already see it. By the way, there's one downside from this... Oh, that was a good one! 14 defenders less. There's one downside from this perfect space usage, and it's... Yeah, no one was on the objective. I noticed... Wait, if they, if they are spread around the whole map... They literally can't have enough defenders left to defend, so yeah. They they overstretched. As all as, as same thing as Rome did, they just overstretched and things that work on small scales don't work on large scales. Basic premise of math, but these dudes didn't. These dudes didn't adhere to it. Alright. Yep. But, as we already found out, they are smart, they know how to play. Meaning, I can expect them crawling around everywhere here, so you need to be very careful. Okay, the dawn is ending and it's getting morning. It's getting slightly sunny. And these tanks need to go. Yep, I'm gonna bomb them. Since the last update, some days ago, the bombs are a bit bugged, it's hard to bomb tanks. So I hope this won't be an issue, because <laughs> these tanks are a problem. The Soviet tanks are so much stronger, so much more dangerous, oh hello, are so much more dangerous than the German tanks, it's, we need to, yeah, we need to be able to bomb them. Okay, 12 dead, but the tank's still alive. If our team pushes quickly into the objective, we can quickly cap. But since the tanks are still there, it's very unlikely it will work. So, yeah, the tanks need to go. They are the bottleneck that we need to solve. And there's a fucker behind me. Uh, let's see if I can get some bullets in. Yeah, the objective itself is empty, but we can't get close because we get destroyed from the soldiers behind. What these dudes did in the f ah there you are bitch. What these dudes did in the first objective, meaning spreading out and hiding behind the objective, doesn't really work on closed objectives like the trench system and the bunker, but it perfectly works on an open objective like this one. Yeah, once the machine gunner, the tail machine gunner, got killed, that there wasn't any reason left to to stay alive, because if I didn't. Self-delete, I would have just wasted 5 to 10 more seconds with him shooting me. The whole calculation though is that it also wastes his time, but 
our time obviously is more valuable because we perform higher than any enemy so we need to value our time higher and invest so we need to free up as much time as possible to help our team if i was a noob or if for some reason i couldn't play well right now i would actually do everything to waste the enemy's pilot's time because i would expect that he's more dangerous than i am though right now that's not the case Okay. Yeah, we're getting all the easy kills of our artillery strikes and other things. But Yeah, that's the same problem. We need to, we can't get close to the objective. Fuck. Oh my god, five of them. A whole assault squad. You can identify them by the NKVD caps, which is also historically accurate because they were one of the first who had basically complete companies with with PPDs and PPSHs. Oh damn. Ah, this is good because I can't remember the last time I got destroyed so hard. We can't even get close. Oh, <laughs> thank you Mr. Tank. I can't get close but he's coming close to us. Yep. Goodbye. These T28s need to die instantly. They have one of the highest firepowers in the game. But they are balanced because they are they are quite easy to destroy. At least the first T28. The second T28 is very dangerous because it's not that easy to destroy. But yeah. Alright. Strong recommendation. Always when you take a tank, think about what ammunition you need and if, you, if it's anti-tank, yeah, then it's good since you start with one. But if it's high explosive shells, quickly shoot the first round out so you can reload the new shell. Because having the right first shot can literally decide a whole game. Especially one that this game I think will be ridiculously close because we barely got the first objective. Mostly due to them blundering, but this objective is great getting destroyed already. That's a BT-7, that's a weak tank. But he must be behind some... Yeah, he, he's behind something that protects him because... Any shot of us will one-shot him. It's basically impossible to not one-shot him with our cannon. Oh, damn. Yes. This ain't looking good. Can we do it now? Finally! Oh my god. Yep. This is already a <laughs> tank graveyard. This dude who's, who, who, who's fumbling around with this anti-tank gun. Like, dude, what do you expect? First of all... <laughs> no. This is an... I think this is an enemy built and tank blocker because no natural tank blockers aren't here on the road. He needs to destroy the tank blocker and then just forget about his center tank gun and start camping. Come on. <laughs> He's not a comp. Yeah, he, he destroyed the center tank gun. Very good. He's efficient with his resources. Alright. Yeah, this is. Yeah, you see, the enemies are really smart. They built a tank blocker. Literally, one tank blocker completely blocks the road. Because this is the absolute most sensitive part of the road for stuff like that. And with a bunch of dead tanks, we're completely stopped. You know what? This game is perfect. You know why? It's literally a depiction of the German attack, the Unternehmen Barbarossa, in 1941. It started off very fast and quick and successful. And then suddenly, you got fucked, and <laughs> and there wasn't any progress anymore. And then you had to grind, but when you grind, you get grinded down because you're you're you don't have infinite soldiers, unlike the Soviets, who have almost infinite soldiers. So yes, this is literally this is literally the original Eastern Front experience. Alright. What are we gonna do now? Oh, we capped. Good. 
I already got so much brain damage from this game. I thought the next objective would be in the village, but nah, it's the it's the it's the wooden bunker. And trust me, I'm not in the mood to get grinded down again. We need to cap this fast because this bunker is is uh, it's it's also hard. It's similar to the to the previous one. Yeah, first of all, we need to get him. This dude is ridiculously fast. Come on. And he messes up. If he just flew away, we wouldn't get him. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, mister. Goodbye, Tavarish. The thing is, he got he got greedy because he wanted he thought, oh I'm so fast, I'm gonna turn around and get behind us and shoot me, but yeah. He he's faster than us. But if he starts turning around, obviously for geometrical reasons, he will be slower. <laughs> and we will catch him up and just destroy him. So yeah, he messed up. Good for us though. Yep, let's see, do the bombs work or they still bug? Because these bombs are quite, they are really perfectly placed. Up, oh, alright, bombs don't do anything. Alright, bombs are bugged. Damn it. Pain, you see, our, tw this is a T28 by the way. Our 20 millimeter cannons dealt more damage to the tank than the bombs. Because you saw that the, the 20 millimeters dealt some yellow damage. But the bombs didn't do uh, didn't do anything at all. Yeah, this is annoying. At least someone already killed him, as we saw in the window upright. Okay. What's really great about this map is that the weather constantly changes. So right now it's clear, but it can change at any time. And then we get another snowstorm. Snowstorms are good for us, because if we just bum rush the objective, the defenders won't be able to see us. And unless they know the map very well, or play very intelligently, they won't be really that effective anymore at defending. Yeah, with this enemy team though, I expect them to actually always be competent and do some strong composition, so... Yeah... Ah, we need to perform very well. We need to we need to outperform the whole enemy team basically now. What the? <laughs> okay, our pilot got one shot. <coughs> By a 25 millimeter. All right. Here's our Theophile. Theophile is Greek for God loving. Let's see if he... Let's see if he's blessed with some celestial luck. Because we need it now. We absolutely need it. Yeah, we got our trusty... I just wanted to say MP40, but uh, it's MP38. Yeah, it's one silver cheaper. It's half the price in Moscow. So I got the MP38s, not MP40s. Don't worry, after the merging I'm gonna play only MP40s. Simply for style reasons. All right, we need we need them more for rallies. We need lots of damn fucking rallies because otherwise we're gonna get schlonged. Yeah, this looks quite safe. Yeah, this looks barely safe, but safe enough at least. Ah oh my god, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> we got lucky we didn't die from this grenade. And this was a very well cooked grenade. I considered blowing it, throwing it back, but it, it exploded instantly, basically. So, alright, no rallies for us. Okay, Soviets. Motherfuckers. Ah, uh, alright. What can help us? Yeah, the biggest squad possible. A nine man rifleman squad. That's what that was. Yeah. <sighs> they are spread out again. I barely see enemies on the objective. I see them everywhere around. What we need to do is we need to take the sniper. 
kill everyone far, be far behind so we can get close. And then grenade launch a bit around. So we keep them distant and then we can camp. And this is the thing. Our teammates need to build sandbags so we stop getting fucked. Because once we have a bunch of sandbags here. Three sandbags left, uh, four sandbags left, two sandbags right and they can't kill us anymore and we can cap easily. They just need to build fucking sandbags. Okay. Flamethrower squad, great in Moscow, but not on this map. <laughs> not on this map as an attacker on this objective. But it has two assault rifles and two grenade launchers, so this is actually what we want right now. Okay, can we get close? The thing is, even if we can't get close, the flames themselves make sure the enemies can't see much. So they can, well, if they're smart, they can deduce where my soldier is running. But burning the ground is going to make sure they can't get close. Oh, yes. And there's a T-34 with a 76mm cannon, which is slogging us. Oh. If, yeah, you see, the fire worked. They couldn't get on the objective. They also got flamers, but they got them too late. <laughs> they got them too late, we kept, nice. Yes. This objective is gonna decide the game because we need to preserve around 300-400 lives. Because the last objective, if the team messes up again and doesn't build rallies like a bunch of monkeys, we will need all the lives you can get to keep the last point. Because the last point is across the frozen water river. And in the bunker, and it's perfectly defended, and it's horribly hard to attack. Yeah, we absolutely need to cap this quickly now. I noticed this is an extremely skill intensive objective because I remember from defending it whenever I play bad or our team plays bad we lose it whenever we play very well we hold it so yeah it literally depends on how good the how good both teams play fuck there's these behind it uh, I hope my bots can kill them uh, Oh fuck. Oh fuck. Yeah, they, they got the highest firepower possible for the Soviets. They got T-34s and T-28s. Literally everything you don't want to see. If they had T-50s too, they would have the three strongest tanks for the Soviets here. Uh -huh. And the T-34 is still alive and he's one-shotting our tanks and our tanks need to learn to just stop spawning tanks and build trellis on the far left. Yeah, we need to build trellis on the far left down the river so we can just attack from the side. The enemy controls the main road. It's literally profoundly retarded to keep attacking from the front. But if we only have the one rally that I built there's no other way for us to spawn. <laughs> yeah. So the team needs to build trellis as fast as possible. Oh, thank you. Whatever this wooden thing is called. It was in front of me. It saved our asses. Yeah, these enemies are very good. They are literally attacking from all sides. They are even positioned in this building. They may have a rally in this house. And they got smart tankers who are literally doing the offensive tank tanking that I always preach. He's doing it with a tank that isn't even well armored, but he's so shady. He thinks that he... Yeah, and it works out. Okay, where do we spawn? Yeah, we need more fucking rallies. We need more fucking rally. Do you see we spawn and we instantly get fucked? If we just had one rally here and one rally 20 meters to the front, this would be an instant cap.
All right. All right. The this this wooden fence doesn't want to break. Oh yep. Yeah. All right. Time for sandbags. Just always. I I I I won't stop preaching it. Always build those damn sandbags. They are your best friend. Imagine in real life if soldiers could just create sandbags in one and a half seconds in front of them. You would see sandbags across the whole world in, on every single battlefield because these sandbags literally change the whole flow of the battle. But people are too lazy to build them. <laughs> or whatever to else they are. Alright, so... Yep, I'm just blindly throwing explosive stuff into the houses and always someone dies. Yeah, and now we are re now we are spawned. Now we are spawned fucked because we, we can't sp Whenever Whenever you have to wait to spawn, you know the team is fucked because there should obviously you shouldn't wait. It's extremely inefficient. Just Yeah, sadly our team is a bit retarded. Except for one player who who builds rallies constantly, and the enemy team is very strong because they have, no matter how well, I killed like twice, <laughs> yeah. no matter how many we kill, they're always back again. It shows that they have so many rallies. They, they, they yeah, it's a it, killing them doesn't work, doesn't change anything because they will be instantly back, and we just lose lives. So we need to overwhelm them for 10-20 seconds by having more soldiers on the objective than they have which is only possible by having more of these it's also possible to constantly throw your head against the wall losing hundreds of lives and hoping that due to statistical fluctuations you get random moments where you have more soldiers and you cap yeah this statistical method also works though it's the most inefficient method you can use. <laughs> and we see that we already lost 350 lives. Come on, nine soldiers. This should be fucking enough to cap. And there's one more for on the right side again. And they're oh my god, and they're outside too. Oh my god. Oh, this is painful. Fuck. Ah, I couldn't make it in time to throw it back. I want to grenade launch the house, but they're coming from outside. Oh, this time I caught it. Nice. This looks hopefully good enough. I wanted to say good, but it, it wouldn't be a true statement. Hopefully good enough is the best I can give. Fuck. Did I get too curious? Yes, I risked too much. I should have just... Yeah, I should have stayed watching the right side. I wanted to kill them that are approaching the house. But yeah, the central road is the killing line. Oh, nice. We got spawn fucked by an artillery strike because... Too few rally points. Yeah, the usual problem. But we almost kept, so we just need to keep for uh, keep keep. Yeah, you see the pro the tanks, the Soviet tanks are irrelevant. They are on the central road, so they're fucking irrelevant if we s if I have rallies on the left side. Like people don't understand that war is not about fucking getting your ass fucked and dying every single second. It's about accomplishing stuff without dying. <laughs> and building rallies helps you not to die. But people don't get it. Which is annoying. Oh my fucking... Oh dude! This profound motherfucker on the right side. He must have his best day of his life. Sitting there and... I mean... I don't read the... I don't remember the kill feed, but... If it's the same dude spawning there all of the time, it... By the way, it's the fifth time or so I get killed while writing something to my team. Yeah, this is fucking annoying. This game is a pain in the ass. Absolute pain in the ass. 
Yeah, I can't even sit anymore, so painful. Okay. Let's get this fucking tank. And he's driving backwards, damn it. I hoped he would be closer here. I guess he learned from the like, from the time that he approached us on the second objective and made it possible to kill him. I can't wait to play car 90 oh Car 98 only on low battle ratings in the future. I'm literally tired of full auto weapons. And I don't like semi autos at all, so I just want to car 98 everyone and everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I want to take a tank. So now we need to do two things. One tank needs to shell the bunker and then shell the area behind the bunker non stop. And then everyone else in the team, literally everyone else, needs to push the far left side. If if he's a good player or spawning on the far right, also the right side, but usually only the left side works. And build rallies there. And this is how we win this. Yeah, these random fucking Soviets completely fucked us up now. Yeah, I didn't expect them to still be alive there. With our team also being dominant on this left side. Okay, at least I could take a tank. Oh, tank with E. <laughs> okay. Alright. No fucking machine guns for you. Okay. If I get fucked by some random Soviets on this side, it's it's over, so I need to be safe. Okay, let's see. Being here is very safe because the enemy tanks are spawning far, far behind the forest. It takes them around 30 seconds to drive close, and close means very far left. So, yeah, but I have to get close now, sadly. I can't see... Yeah, you see, this, this fog came in the worst possible moment. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah, this match is giving me hemorrhages. Straight in the head. Okay, just a mindless bum rush to the bunker can win the game quickly. If I'm so close I can't see them behind the bunker. Which is bad. Yeah. And now, ah, you see the snowstorm is annoying as hell. I had to leave the bunker. What the fuck, there was a... Oh my god, I... I, no I noticed it, but I couldn't believe that there's actually a fucking Soviet exactly here. Although we're surrounded by teammates. And of course they haven't built rallies. Yep. Yeah, this is not how you fucking play this game. This is not how you fucking play this game. You build rallies to play enlisted. You don't run around like an idiot and get shot on a 100 meter distance giant frozen moat. It's... yeah, but okay. In real life, by the way, that's the... That's why, by the way, armies, one of the reasons armies expect, like, blind obedience towards the the officers for, from normal soldiers, because they know that most normal soldiers are literally retarded. They can't think for themselves, they're gonna fuck up. And you can expect that in real life, if you, have, if you throw together a bunch of soldiers, they will do this bullshit in real life too. And then they get their whole 1,000 soldiers killed, because they... because they... Because they think, oh, I am uh, i don't know what to do, I'm gonna get shot. Alright, uh, we need to stay focused and still get this now. Yep, I still, oh, come on, if I don't get shot, I can, ah, damn it, alright. Yep, yep. I don't know what he means, 3 versus 3. Yeah, yeah, that was painful. The game was very fun, the game was really tight, the enemies were very strong, I'm sure they played in a stack. They played in a stack because normal players aren't that well organized. Yeah. Yeah, battle was good. Was fun. 
and the atmosphere was amazing. Yeah, that's how Illicit always should be and always should look like. We have so much stuff going on, though the weather fucked us. As you saw in the end, <laughs> it forced my tank out and then my tank got clapped. If my tank stayed in the background, I could have killed everyone and we could have possibly pushed while well, my team could have pushed and I was I would have stayed in the background. Yeah, that was painful. But yeah, we learned all the usual lessons about how to play enlisted. Always build flanking rallies, always respond to the enemy. And the enemies are very strong. Yes, they got literally four, pl three, pl two player, yeah, three players who constantly build rallies. And possibly three more who a couple of times build rallies. Yeah, this enemy team was damn strong. One of the strongest enemy teams ever. And if you compare their points one by one, obviously you take us out of the equation. They basically always were better than our respective soldier. Alright, that was good. That was really good. The biggest takeaway here is that no matter how strong the enemies are, you still can find a way to win. And everything went quite okay, because obviously you don't, you don't, you don't want to completely dominate your enemy. You still want to have fun. And the, the back and forth was great. The only point that was completely fucked was the second last point, the fourth point. This building on the left side, that was fucked because literally they controlled the center road with two tanks. And they constantly pushed and had close rally points. And whenever we killed them, they were instantly back. So we needed to avoid the central road and we needed to have three to four rallies on the left. This would be easily enough to do a quick push to have so many soldiers on the objective within a couple of seconds that they can't kill us all and we're gonna cap. And then we get this objective with only 100 lives lost and we would have had 500 lives for the last objective, which is enough, which is enough. As you saw, we started, I think, with 150 or 200, which is ridiculously low, especially since the team didn't build rallies. So, yeah. Nevertheless, a great match. Let me know how you liked it and how you liked the weather effects. As I said, the weather effects fucked us, but they were still very beautiful and having these kinds of weather effects even more pronounced. Possibly more night, but with Abby's light sources around everywhere. That would be great. Alright, until next time, goodbye.